Binge playlist every single weekend of Josh and myself. You can watch Chair Shot Rally. You can watch the videos here on, on the Wrestling Inc. YouTube channel. You can see some, uh, some clips on social media. You can also uh, subscribe to Wrestling Inc. and all the different audio platforms through Audio Boom and iTunes. And you can, uh, if you just want the audio version and don't want to look at our ugly mugs, uh, it is what it is. But you got to speak gotta, for yourself, Labar. <laughs> but you got to consume it one way or the other. Josh, uh, a, a hot headline right now is WWE and the their TV deal with the NBC Universal expires. Next year in 2019, so they're either going to re-sign with NBC Universal, or we've heard a lot of talk, a lot of rumor, everything from insiders in Hollywood to you know Colin Cowherd, kind of almost maybe sp- spilling some beans a few months ago on his show that that Fox wants to grab uh, Raw and SmackDown. We've heard that Amazon, um, YouTube have all been potential bidders to to be the uh, distribution home uh, in the United States at least. For Raw and SmackDown, uh, yeah. first off, do, do you think they're going to leave NBC Universal? Do you think that's going to happen? I don't think it's going to happen. I, in a way, want it to happen. And Raj brought up a good point from Wrestling Nick is if they went to Fox, they'd only have two hours. They wouldn't have an overrun because of local news. Um, those things could change, though. They probably won't, obviously. Um, with WWE moving to Fox, potentially, um, I think it gives Fox a fresh take on sports entertainment. I think Fox is a... I still feel like it's more suitable for WWE in a weird way than it is for like the UFC or for even... You know, you obviously have the NFL, which is a completely different animal. But if you put WWE on a Monday night on Fox, I mean, what's Fox really doing with their late and primetime programming? They have a couple of reality shows. They have some comedies here and there. But they don't have anything that's cutting edge weekly, every single week, that you can guarantee you're going to get 3 million viewers. And also, if you do the Tuesday night on SmackDown, FS1 would be perfect. FS1 has had such a hard time at competing with the likes of ESPN and with the likes of, of you know uh, MLB Network and NBA TV for all those sports. So if you put SmackDown on there for two hours, Raw on Monday night for two hours, that would be the perfect model for me. People don't want to see three hours, and that's what's going to happen. You know, they're obviously still going to stay on NBC Universal. I think uh, you know, the USA Network. They're going to. It's been a friendship there for a long time. Aside from Sp- uh, Spike TV and uh, TNN. That's been what professional wrestling has been all about on the USA Network. So I don't see that going anywhere. Um, I would just like to see something else because I think it can bring us a fresh perspective on something that might need a little uh, little spice on top of that salad. Yeah, I tend to agree. Vince is very loyal. Vince, um, he, uh, he has had such a long relationship with the, with NBC and the USA Network specifically that you know whether it be letting Raw do, do the overrun, whether it be you know um, just 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 overall just all the content they produce, and you know, and Vince just probably had you know pretty good creative control. I, I do think that he he's going to want to try to stay with him. Obviously, you know, money is ultimately the, the deciding factor, but I do think there's a, a sense of loyalty. But much like you said, I think a lot of us could could really see maybe a fresh coat of paint of being on Fox uh, could do good for everybody. Fox could do for good for WWE, especially if it does. Get raw to decrease down to two hours, but but uh, you know and I, the last thing I read, I you know, and we're not involved in Hollywood Insider, so all we can go off is what you what you read is that you know NBC will probably keep raw, but they don't want to keep SmackDown. But I I have a hard time seeing raw being under one umbrella and SmackDown being another. You know, it was one thing when SmackDown was on Sci-Fi, and I'm pretty sure Sci-Fi is part of that NBC flag, so they were all still in the same family, so to speak. I can't see. WWE having to do business with NBC for Monday night and then doing business with Fox for two. I, I just that's yeah, not that, that, that mean, doesn't seem like what WWE would do. No, I don't think they're going to do that either. And I think realistically speaking, if they want to keep Raw three hours, um, you know, SmackDown has been a consistently good show, and they have so much talent where you don't want to see this happen. But I could personally see them doing something with SmackDown if USA and, and NBC Universal does not want to broadcast SmackDown on Tuesday nights. They might really just do it as a, either a WWE network, uh, keep it inside their own umbrella, or they could even do something like a YouTube or an Amazon. I mean, you put it on there, people are streaming more than anything. I watch my Netflix more than anything, really, these days, aside from professional wrestling and sports. And when 2019 comes around, I mean, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for WWE to shop that, maybe get a good price. And think about it like this. If they go on YouTube, if they, they can do it anytime they want. They can film it whenever, but then it goes back, be it playing devil's advocate with myself – is it's not live or you know maybe spoilers come out and they're back where Friday Night SmackDown used to be. So it's not a win-win situation for WWE. It's a win-win situation for Raw because everybody wants Raw, but their red-headed stepchild of SmackDown is the one I think that is going to be uh, in most danger of, of suffering from their product. I, I still don't see on this new contract. You don't see it going to YouTube or anything? I, even I, streaming? I don't see WWE leaving cable. They, they're, going to, they're going to want Raw and SmackDown to be on cable. It's, that's still how they, in theory, draw in. 
the casual viewers to then try to say, sure. hey, you know, we had this WWE Network, or hey, were you a fan 20 years ago? Well, you can watch WrestleMania from yeah. 20 years ago. So, I, I mean, and I, and I think there's probably more money still on that. I mean, now, now this will be a new deal they signed for 2019, and no, we don't know how long that deal will be. Now, this might be the last deal that involves them primarily on cable, the one that they have yeah. in five like years. 2024 or whatever. Yeah. Right, that one might be okay. The amount of people have cut the cord, you know, you, streaming is the only option now. But I, I think this will be the last one we're still going to keep them on cable. Do, do you think, and this is this is possible as well, I know that you're still a, a proponent of, you know, keeping professional wrestling and, and SmackDown specifically on cable as well. Do you think that there's an opportunity for them to potentially go to Hulu? They already have a partnership with Hulu to stream, um, you know, commercial-free edited versions of the show. And as you saw with the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs, they've had live feeds of the games there you can watch that might be their easiest opportunity. And think of Hulu. I mean, people have Hulu, but it's not as big as, say, Amazon or it's not as big as Netflix. This could be a really good purchase for Hulu if they brought SmackDown live on Tuesdays on their channel. I, could Hulu afford it? I mean, I think the number that we've heard from this from the deal that they're currently in is something like $150 million. I mean, I, I don't know what Hulu's, you know, I don't yeah. know. If they did, if, even if they did expand their plan with Hulu, they, again, they still have to be on. They still need to be on cable. I, I, I just, I don't, I don't see how you cannot have them anywhere Monday night or Tuesday night on on the channel guide. I, I and again, I know more and more people. And quite frankly, it won't well, just hurt. SmackDown Raw's not going anywhere. It right? won't. But it I, won't hurt. If, if I'll tell you this, I, I would between how much I enjoy Netflix and I enjoy Amazon Prime and I enjoy every other, other every other streaming service, if. If WWE leaves cable, then I will finally cut the cord because I, really that yeah. is the last reason I have to keep the cable going. I mean, and, I, and I've tried Sling TV, even where, which is where you can package some of those USA and stuff like that. The only problem is it's just a matter of, okay, do I have the best internet in all parts of the house for the damn yeah. Roku or whatever to work? But, we had those streaming issues for the network uh, when it first launched. Remember those? Every month it seemed yeah. like pay-per-view would stop. So. Yeah, I mean, so I, I can just say this. I mean, I have I have Comcast, though. So WWE better tell Comcast if we're leaving uh, if we're leaving cable, then you're going to lose Justin Lavar's enormous Eight. enormous bill that it is every month. Hey, my two hundred dollar bill for AT and T isn't any better. I'll tell yeah. you that much. But that's I, mean, I agree. It's going to be if that happens. There's no reason for me to have it. I mean, I can watch all of my sports and everything else, you know, via streaming devices. Chair Shot Reality, Wrestling Inc. Uh, every single week, follow Josh on Twitter, at Josh Eisenberg 4 at Justin Labar. We'll be back next weekend to, as we get closer and closer to what I think, and Josh, I think even kind of admitted, is one of the biggest pay-per-views now of the year. Money in the Bank in Chicago. Hit us up on social media. We'll talk to you then.